I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and welcome to the drive home to Hawkesbury where I believe every home has a story and I love sharing those stories on real estate in the Hawkesbury with you. Here we share the best ways to add value to your property, how to avoid the common mistakes people make when buying and selling property and how to get the maximum return on your investment with a focus on supporting local business. I live love Hawkesbury and can't wait to get into today's episode with you so let's get started. or good evening depending on what time you're watching this episode. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and today I'm very privileged and honoured to be joined by Master Janine Laird. How are you Janine? I'm very well thank you Rachel and thank you very much for inviting me on this wonderful live chat. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's been so much fun, this feng shui journey for me. Over the years, I've I've read a lot of books and met a lot of people, but I think the first interaction that I had with feng shui was actually contacting you, um, being the president of the Australian chapter, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through. But I think I met you at Melbourne conference that you set up for the Australian chapter. Would that be right? We, we had the big international one in 2014. I think around about 2011, we had Grandmaster Raymond Lowe come down and speak for us. And then I think 2012, we had Grandmaster Dr. Stephen Skinner. Um, and then 2014, we had everybody, Grandmaster Tan, Grandmaster Vincent Co, everybody from the International Feng Shui Association and all over the world came all the way down to Melbourne. We had a great big conference here, which was wonderful. It was fantastic and so well organised. And I do remember going to Shanghai with you all too and all of the, the mm -hmm. masters and grandmasters. Such a good, good and um, say, such a great learning experience for everybody too. But tell me, Janine, how did you, for the people that are watching, hello to everybody that's there. Um, for the people that are watching, how did you get into feng shui? What, what is the start of your journey and and who are you in regards to feng shui? Oh, goodness, that, that goes back a long way. I, th I think we're drawn to this sort of thing. But I started my formal training in 2003 with the Australian College of Environmental Studies. Um, and I've, I've been running my own professional consultancy indeed since 2003. Uh, following my initial studies, I then started to travel overseas. I studied with Grandmaster Raymond Lowe, Grandmaster Vincent Ko, um, and um, a lot of others in Hong Kong and also uh, in, in Singapore and places like that. So since 2003, I have continued to, to study and be very fortunate to be mentored by great people um, like Grandmaster Vincent Coe and Grandmaster Stephen Skinner and really continue my journey because this, this metaphysical science is, is absolutely huge. So it's been a lifelong passion, which I've been so fortunate because I've been able to turn it into my work and my career. Mm. And it's so true and you are very passionate about it. Every time anybody speaks to, to Janine, I'm sure that they'll see that her eyes light up as I do and um, you've got... <laughs> You've got that real sparkle when it comes to feng shui and you just love it. And and as soon as you start on the topic, whether it's Basi, I Ching, you know, um, going yeah. to somebody's house or talking about different things, it's just fabulous to see you get involved with it all. And you're so giving of your time to people and, and so forth. But I guess for the people that are watching, I mean, there might be some masters on, on, um, on site and there also might be some people that, you know, are dabbling in feng shui a little bit or want to know a little bit more about feng shui. What is feng shui for those people? that want to know? You know, there's a, a lot of misconceptions out there and, and a lot of what, what is mistermed modern feng shui, which, which our, us traditional or classically trained practitioners, we, we cringe when we hear that because feng shui is um, a metaphysical science. We actually regard it as a science. It goes back about 3,000 years. And, of course, everybody knows that feng shui can literally literally be translated as, as wind and water. And that is indeed mm -hmm. true. But bringing it back into the, the 20... <laughs> I can hear that. Exactly. The, the wind, exactly. But bringing, bringing the ancient practice of, of traditional feng shui into the modern 21st century is a, is a challenge that us modern day practitioners have have absolutely embraced and it's all about in, in particular the homes that we live in and the buildings that we practice um, our, or run our businesses out of and to ensure that we select a site 
and we have the home orientation and the internal arrangement of our dwellings done in such a way that they support us to achieve our own personal full potential. In a nutshell, that's it. It's not about waving pussy cats that go like this or about three-legged toes. <laughs> that's modern or that's what we call popular feng shui. In, in traditional or classical feng shui, we very much deal with the earth energies. I deal with compass directions. I work a lot with architects and draftsmen. I deal with uh, scale floor plans. Yes. Um, I deal with interior stylists and designers. So ensuring that the places that we live and work in support us. Yeah, it's so true, isn't it? And I think that a lot of people forget about that and they don't come back to the basics. Um, so I think that it's really important. I'm not too sure whether you're getting the feedback from your end. No, it seems to have gone now, so that's okay. Um, I just want to make sure for everybody listening. So in regards to homes that I go and, and look at marketing for sale and those sorts of things, I think feng shui is a very important part of that process, as you say. For the people that are watching, yep. if they're looking at putting their home on, on the market, I mean, a real estate agent looks at a house and says, okay, is it beautiful? Does it have curb appeal? I guess from a feng shui perspective, it's similar to the form school and looking at the surrounding environment and also internal and external, isn't it? Absolutely right. And on your website, you've got a wonderful section uh, under the selling called How to Get High Offers. And I know that you indeed have also done a lot of training with the Australian College of Environmental Studies and it shows on your website. I must congratulate you on that. But you can... You can certainly, and I always do encourage someone to get a professional consultant in, and please make sure that when you are selecting someone that they belong to an accredited association such as the International Feng Shui Association because, indeed, we do have standards uh, in the industry and someone that is a member of IFSA Australia Chapter, they've already received training and they have experience, so you're getting someone that is properly qualified to do the job and haven't just read a couple of books and they call themselves, um, you know, a consultant. But from a general perspective, if you're wanting to do some things yourself to improve your home, can't go past your website, quite frankly. Curb <laughs> appeal, front lawns, entice with colour, ornaments and decorations, driveways, letterbox, front door it goes on there there is some wonderful general great feng shui advice right on your website rachel for anybody and everybody to read thank you janine yes well if anybody wants to visit the website it's rachelgoldsworthy.com.au very happy for anybody to ask any questions of myself and equally as master janine said it's really important that you know, people out there aren't just practicing feng shui and saying, okay, well, I'm a, I've studied, so I'm a master now and I can do yeah. this, that and the other. There's so much training that's involved and we have to all ensure that we refer the work out to people that know exactly what they're doing. We all have certain yeah. skill sets and we can all work towards that, but we need to know where our limits are and how to then refer it out to somebody like Master Janine that is very well-versed in everything that she's done. The training, I mean, I, if I just showed you um, just uh, wow. this section here of all the training, it's just amazing on on uh, Master Janine's bio and the, the people that she's had uh, the training with. It's not just anybody that has picked up a couple of books and said that they can teach you something. Mm -hmm. They're masters and grandmasters of years, decades, and and also, I guess, families that have passed generational information through. Is that Would that be right, Janine? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ab ab absolutely, absolutely right, for, for sure. There's a wonderful company in Singapore called Wei Feng Shui, and Mark Tan is now the CEO, but his father, Grandmaster Tan Kun Yong, he's run the business for oh, decades and decades. And he's about a 21st um, lineage of a feng shui master. So That's these right. people go back a long, long time. Absolutely. Yeah. They've been doing it for a long time and they've been getting an awful lot right. So if you want to tweak, once you've gone, if you're preparing your house for sale, once you've gone through and done all this, all these things that Rachel has on, on her website, you know, decluttered, cleaned, so forth and so on, if you want that little bit extra to help you get over the line or to get the best possible price, then you absolutely can call someone such as myself because there are specific formula that we can apply and certain things that we can do specific to your house 
that can also help increase your potential to get a great sale. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like looking at a renovation of a home when people are buying a house and they look at it yeah. and they go, okay, well, I'm going to do carpets, paint, kitchen, bathroom, those sorts of things. Feng Shui, from my understanding, is that there's layers that you can apply, as you're saying, Master, that you can look at it and go, okay, well, is the form correct? Is the location correct? What's the proximity yeah. to everything? What's the compass directions? And then you start doing flying star charts, those sorts of things, which gives you so much more information on the property, doesn't it? It's just fascinating. It's just so accurate. Absolutely. And before you buy, it's not only before you sell, but please, before you buy, it's a lot easier and a lot cheaper in the long run to get someone <laughs> such as myself in to do a pre-purchase site inspection. And sometimes mm -hmm. even we can take a bit of a look first of all via Google Earth. And if it checks out via Google Earth, then we come out on site and have a quick look. But, but ask, you know, even ask the real estate agent before you purchase that, why is someone selling? Because if if the agent replies to you, look, you know, there's been a divorce in the family, they've 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 had financial issues, someone's died, then unfortunately you know that there may possibly be something wrong with 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 the feng shui that that uh, that either the, the practitioner can come out and say no look best this house is not for you or a practitioner can come out and say look i can see what's wrong here this house is good but we need to do this and that to fix it so go and spend that few hundred dollars before you purchase something and you're talking hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars invest a few hundred dollars in our services it'll save you a lot of a lot of, a lot of trouble in the long run a lot of heartache yeah with the median house price in sydney one million and twenty nine yeah. nine thousand you know, have somebody like yourself come in and talk about the different areas and the aspects prior to a purchase. And I think we'll end up going like they do over in Europe. At the moment in Europe, they do pest building, valuation, all of those sorts of things that we do in Australia, but they add that layer of a feng shui, then bowel biology, then, you know, a few other bits and pieces that yeah. I think are really important because the environment that the we're in, if we're not even if it's, as you were talking about before, clutter, if we're living in a cluttered environment, we've got stuff everywhere, you walk home, yeah. you don't feel relaxed, you don't feel like you want to do anything, you just look at it and you're overwhelmed. And you're overwhelmed at the thought of, A, I've got to clean it up, B, I don't know what to do with this stuff, C, that, you know, the, the guilt trips that I might, oh, that person bought me that, so I can't throw that out. And, you know, there's so many decisions in all of the stuff that you see. So if you can just clear that space and, and just from the basics point of view, go out and, um, you know, bit by bit and the simple things and bring it back to basics. But as you say, sort of get somebody out there to, to do that pest building valuation pre-purchase plus a feng shui audit because it's so valuable. I can't tell you how many times I've, I've sold houses to people over the years or gone to houses before people look at putting their house on the market. And as you say, there's an essence of energy in that, that site, in that property, in that home. And whether it's to do with the renovations that they've done that have a different set of rules applied to it, or whether it's a pre-existing property that, you know, it was under a, another uh, cycle, it's, um, it's all fascinating and so accurate, almost so that you can walk in and tell somebody exactly what's going on based on the report that the master has, has completed. And then they say, are you psychic or are you is there something how do you know all of this information you know have you got a crystal ball you need to talk to all of us and and it's just the house that talks to you or the land that talks to you or the you know the flying star chart that talks to you or the forms it's just fascinating isn't it for sure i i, I always encourage all my clients when i do when i do residential dwellings the first thing i do is actually take them across the road and turn yes. around and have a look at their house from the other side of the road. And a good consultant, when we're pro properly trained, I can already tell you something about the occupants of the home before I even enter it. That's yes. the first story. We don't get out our low pans until we've had our, our feng shui eyes on and we've had a look at what's behind the home, what's on either side of the home, what's in front of the home, how can the home, does the home receive chi? Does the home retain chi? We look at the balance of the yin and yang. So there's a lot to be determined before we even mm. get our low pan down and take any facing directions. There's an old saying that says form never lies and mm. formula is not always accurate. So always yes. check out the forms.
first of yes. all, first and foremost. No, it's really important and I think it's great advice that you've given because, you know, it's it's like anything. You buy a car, you're not going to, yeah. okay, well, the first thing you want to know is what colour is it because it's what it looks like, what it feels like, how it makes you feel. Do you know what I mean? It's the same thing yeah. with a house. It's yeah. the same thing with the feng shui. Okay. If it's not going to make you feel, you know, supported or there's strength or there's, you know, all the things that you're looking for. Needs to work what, you. Yeah, absolutely. So, so many people nowadays, they have to work in order to keep the house, but the house should work and support you. Yes, yeah, absolutely. No, and is there any tips that you would give somebody? Obviously, each individual circumstance, you know, there's different things that apply, but is there certain things that you see quite commonly in homes that you think would be of value to the people that are watching today? Well, we've already touched on clutter. Now, clutter is not a part of... Clutter and space clearing is not a part of classical feng shui practice, but it does inhibit the flow of qi. So if you have a home that's dirty or a bit dusty or and, and, uh, smell and that sort of thing, that does inhibit. We, we want to have a qi is those invisible, intangible earth energies, and they bring opportunities for prosperity to people. So we want them to be able to come from the immediate surrounding environment, settle and accumulate in front of our home so that every time we open our door, it enters and it brings opportunities for prosperity into our lives and they're able to move freely around the home. So if you have piles of dirty washing and, and left over this and that and stuff, it doesn't. She stagnates and opportunities yes. don't come so readily in, in, into our lives. So the first thing to do is what we said is please declutter and clean on wonderful fine days. Open your windows, get some fresh air in there as well. Yeah. So Open they're the, the two main things. And, you know, out, out the front should look absolutely terrific. So, like I said, go and stand over the road and have a look at your house and see what sort of a story it tells you about about the family, which is you, living in that home. And then go and work from the front all the way through to the back. So there's some, there's some great general advice. I always say good housekeeping and good home maintenance is good basic feng shui. Do that first. When you've done that, then you can get a professional in so that we can tweak things to mm. increase your potential or a successful sale if that's what you're after. Yeah, no, that's terrific. And if people were looking for a particular sale in a short period of time, other than doing those sorts of things and other than getting a consultant in like yeah. yourself, is there any special i mean i know the the americans um like putting a saint joseph statue and burying it upside down within 1.2 meters of the for sale sign and they say it definitely sells the property now i i have not tried this <laughs> but, uh, that's, that's, trust me that's nothing to do with classical function nothing at all. No. yes there are some things in order in order to to increase potential for sale, we look at annual energies. There are permanent energies within a home, which we call, which are attached to the birth chart of the home. But there, each year there's there's annual energies that come in. So we want to locate where the most prosperous ones are, where the one that we call the water star eight is that relates to, to current prosperity or even a water star nine. And if that is out the front in a position that is clearly visible from the road, the first thing that we want to do is we want to erect the for sale sign in a good, prosperous annual energy. That's number one. Number two is, if possible, we want to bring the perspective buyers in the door that also has a prosperous energy. So if you don't have that door in a permanent good energy, then we like to locate um, uh, a door that has a really good annual energy. That's number two. So bring them in a door that's got a good prosperous energy, put up your sign that's in a good annual prosperous energy, and then within the home we locate the permanent, the nice water star eight or water star nine, and we can put a little water feature there, little bubbling little plug-in fountain, light some ca yeah. candles. <clears throat> yes. Those sort of things as well. So there's lots of things that we can do to to identify specific areas of prosperous energy and activate those to bring mm. money to you. Mm. No, great advice. And as I say, it's really important to get somebody out like Master Janine to be able to overlay that on a map because it's not just a matter of, oh, I'm just going to put a water feature 
in the backyard or I'm going to put no. a water feature at the front of the house or I'm going to put, a, you know, at the entrance I'm going to put a, you know, one of those cats that you were talking about before or what have you that swing and, you know, have gold on them. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to sell this house and it's just going to magically happen, the highest price, shortest possible time. It's not quite like that, but um, certainly there's okay. things that... <laughs> <laughs> certainly things that can be done and uh, made to make things happen a little bit faster. Now, with all of the training that you've had, decades of training with some fantastic people, how did you actually, for those people watching, and, and I'm always fascinated to hear people's story, um, how did you become a master? Like what, what steps did you have to take to be able to qualify for such a, a great um, you know, qualification? Well, that's where the International Feng Shui Association comes in. In 2004, there was a wonderful group of uh, Feng Shui masters in Singapore, and I've already said their names, but I'll briefly say them again. It was uh, Raymond Lowe, Vincent Ko, Stephen Skinner, um, and uh, Grandmaster uh, Tan Kun Yong. And they met at, uh, at Raffles. Why, why wouldn't you? And that they were becoming more and more perplexed at the lack of standards in the industry and a lot of cowboys who called themselves professional consultants and were in anything but, and decided that it really was um, imperative to have uh, a formal international association that is acknowledged and not only do we are we responsible for having proficient um, accredited training through various training facilities throughout the world, but then we're also responsible for uh, training up the next layer of masters, if, if, if you like. So through the International Feng Shui Association, um, they have um, a, a program or a journey that you can go along uh, with them. And once you've a acquired a certain amount of, of training and practical experience, you can apply for accreditation as a master. And I can tell you it is nerve-wracking. So it, I had to... Um, Offer. I had to provide reports and proof of my work and I also had to um, be interviewed, though they already know me very, very well. So it was quite a process to go through and it certainly does not mean that I am a master of everything. It does not mean that. What it does mean is that I have acquired a certain level of experience and, and expertise within the industry. So, uh, but the International Feng Shui Association, they're the ones now who, the, the only association in the whole world who have the Grand Masters who can train up and test younger practitioners such as myself and then offer them the title of, of Master. Mm. And it is a real level of expertise. And I must say the years that I've known Janine, um, any time you ask her a question, it'll just rattle off the top of her tongue. She knows exactly what she's talking about. She knows where to go, what to do, how it all happens. And if you want to attend a great conference, Master Janine has certainly got that down pat as well. I remember, as I say, the first one in 2011, it was it was fabulous. And, and even in uh, Shanghai, I mean, I, I was going as a traveller, very new to the feng shui concept. I had no real idea what I was doing and why I was even in China, but I had the best time because it was like a family away from a family. Everybody is just so welcoming and the masters, grandmasters, everybody will treat you as you know, you're walking down the street and you just have a conversation. They'll have a cup of coffee. They'll go and have a meal with you. They'll share their knowledge with you. And there's no yeah. holes barred. And I love that about the feng shui community that you've created in Australia and obviously the people yeah. that are abroad. So for anybody that's watching this, I really appreciate you you joining us on the line. Um, Jenny said to, um, she sent some hearts, uh, say hello there. And uh, Jenny Hayes. Hi, Jenny. And then you've yeah. also got Bogstown. Um, Chantalo, so they've said hello as well, hello. sent some hearts to you. So <laughs> so there's lots of people <laughs> online at the moment, everybody's saying hello. If anybody's got any questions whilst um, Master Janine's on the phone, uh, on the line, that would be great. Um, but what we're going to try and do is get together. I believe you're coming to Sydney um, towards the end of the, the month. month. Would that be yeah, terrific. So if month. anybody wanted to have Master Janine come out to her property or out to their property and get some real advice in regards to your home, what to do, what the, the best steps are and, and to have the best feng shui and the most support within your home, um, how would they be able to get in contact with you, Master Janine? 
if they if they go onto my Facebook or they go onto my onto my website, which is www.shenchi.com.au, uh, uh, um, uh, straight onto my website you can do that, or you can email me, or just just Google Google Janine Laird, and I, I, I trust me, I'll pop up. Yes, and Not she's very responsive to all messages. It gets back to you very quickly. So uh, I've always had uh, great experiences with that. So I will pop up those links for anybody that wanted to get in touch yeah. with Janine whilst you're in Sydney. And obviously you can do consults. I mean, you do consults worldwide. So you're, you're happy to yes, travel for people. And, yeah. I've been all the way from the highlands of, of, of Fiji, the absolute remote highlands of Fiji, to the lowlands of Scotland. So I've been very, very privileged that Feng Shui has, has taken me all around the world. And this year, our international family, the, uh, which is the International Feng Shui Association, we're having our conference in Okayama in Japan on the 1st and 2nd of December. So if you're thinking about going to Japan at all and you'd like to come and do some, some, some Feng Shui and then we've got a post convention too are organized to come and join our our feng shui family because i can assure you it will be fun and the gala dinners having karaoke this year rachel karaoke oh my in Japan. goodness the last time yeah, that i yeah. saw that in shanghai that was hilarious everybody just was having so much fun and oh, i think um, more sophisticated <laughs> <since then. laughs> everybody had their dance moves on the australian team had their dance moves on and their singing moves on at the same time so um it will be fun i'm looking We're forward to going to japan <laughs> yeah well now what's the that that I did want to say, when your previous question when you were asking me about what can someone, those steps that someone can take to ensure that when they're either buying a house or selling a house that they've got uh, covering everything that they possibly can, you know, a really important thing is is to engage the right real estate agent. And that's why I very quickly wanted, wanted to touch on you because preparatory to this, um, I asked you for your birth data. I asked you for the, the year, the month, the day, and the hour that you were born so I could do your Batsu, which is four pillars of destiny. It's a form of, of Chinese astrology. Because when we're doing, and I do a lot of this, I do employee profiling for some large corporate clients just to make sure that they've got the right people doing the right job and it's the right fit for their company. And whenever I do employee profiling, the first thing that I look is look at is not only the inherent characteristics or qualities of those people but I look to see if they're in, in good luck in their life and I'm happy to say Rachel you are in good luck so yay. anyone coming <laughs> and, and, and also I, I already chatted with you about this yesterday but you've got what we call a follow wealth chart wow now follow wealth Excited. chart is actually actually very nice um follow wealth um charts confident in their ability to, to generate income, secure in their financial situation. In other words, you have a very good earning capacity and you're a natural business person. Um, industrious, talented high, and highly intuitive when it comes to finances or, or business. So, it, so going to someone such as you, you've already got this inherent natural knack for business, making money for yourself, but even more importantly, making money for your clients. So that's number one. Is she suited to the profession that she's in? Absolutely, yes, she's a good businesswoman. That's number one. Number two, your favourable elements, according to your chart classification, are metal and earth. So we like to see people working in those industries that not only are pretty strong in their chart, but also it's one of their useful or favourable elements. And as we know, the real estate industry belongs to the earth element. So you're working, you're, you, it's a good fit. No wonder you're doing so well and you're so passionate about your job because you're working in an industry that relates to one of your most favourable elements. That's number two. Number three is at the moment, and, and and since you were 40, you've been in this, actually, even earlier than that, quite frankly, even since 30, you've been in this really strong metal and earth luck. Metal and earth are your two most favourable elements. And this is a very strong earth year as well, yang earth dog year. So here's someone, I'm going to give you a plug now because you deserve it. Anybody out there who's in the area that's thinking of who can I list, list my home with, 
come and see Rachel because she ticks all the boxes, I can assure you. Oh, thank you, Master Janine. I really appreciate that. It's uh, nice to, to hear the background of it because sometimes you you always, sure. everybody, we always question what we're doing, where we're at, what we're doing in our lives. But I always knew that property was for me and it was just what I wanted to do yeah. and where I wanted to be. And I just love helping people do what we do and um, just getting out there and talking to people and understanding their story and the story of their home and how to put that out to the market in a, such a way that people want to fall in love with a home as much as the person that's moving out of that home did and um, on to the next person. So, uh, yeah, it's good to, good to hear the backstory on that. Thank you, Master Janine. That's great. Well, you're very welcome. And I also had I had a couple of things here that I wanted to make sure that we chatted about. Mm -hmm. And I've already touched on on your wonderful website as well, which has got some, some, some brilliant advice. And, and to add to that bit of general information too, which I think we touched on before about, about the, the three lux, because people often wonder where does feng shui come into all of this? And mm. with the Chinese philosophy, we call TNT and Ren, it's the three lux. It's our heaven luck, the earth luck and the man luck. And the heaven luck is what I was just talking to you just now about, about your Batsu, your, your Chinese astrology. What, what your destiny, what your journey is in this life. If you're not destined to be a Bill Gates, I can't make you. And mm. anybody that comes and says that feng shui or Chinese astrology can make you a multimillionaire or a billionaire if it's not your destiny to be that is not telling the truth or they don't understand mm. it. Mm. What I can do as a, as a consultant is I can help you be the best possible version of yourself that you're destined and achieve your full potential, but I can't make you something that you're not destined to be. So that's number one is the earth luck and that's where feng shui comes in and we touched on this already just to make sure that the, the places we live in and the places we work in support us we don't have to work to support it it works that's number two number three is the man luck the luck that we make for ourselves how hard do we work are we people of integrity and and ethics and that's another thing that impressed me about your website where I read about your very first experience renting your cottage to an agent and how devastated you were by the destruction that was rendered on it and the lack of accountability or care by the agent. And that's what initially motivated you to say, hey, I can do better than this and someone needs to. Mm, yeah, so true and it's so important, so isn't it? For sure. So I was very impressed with the, the journey. I, I did my homework on you, Rachel. <laughs> you my certainly did. did. <laughs> Usually I'm Number the one doing three. all of the homework and, and making sure that um, I've got all the questions right for the interviews, but you can't teach the teacher. The teacher is always there. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't help it. I can't help myself. You're right, for sure. I love that about you, but Janine. The, it's yeah. great. <laughs> I take over. So sorry. It's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> thing that I wanted to touch on for, for anybody out there, and I get a lot of questions, and lately I've been helping people um, just, just manage the time in which they're about to put on their home for sale and they're about to, to buy a home. So anybody out there that was thinking of doing that, I th thought I'd run through the next few years to see how the real estate market to travel according to the annual energies with how how we we kind of um we monitor this sort of thing yes so I've, I've had a look all the way from this year 2018 to 2026 now 2018 this year we, we already spoke briefly about it's a very strong earth year now we've come from the last few years a lot of fire now we know that that the real estate industry belongs to the earth element and in the cycle of the elements fire produces or enhances or supports earth so when we're in strong fire years we can we can expect a very buoyant market and indeed that's what we've had but those years of fire are now behind us this year we're in an earth year so that's why the market has stopped its upward progression and we've just stabilized and in some areas we've even had a little bit of a cooling off but there's still a little bit of earth around to support the earth industry of the real estate. And there's a little bit of fire hidden away inside the dog. So the market's just going to probably stabilise for the rest of this year. First, 
next year we've got some more earth around. So a little bit of cooling off but stable. But from mid-2019, mid-2019 onwards, for the next few years, no fire anywhere. We come mm. into the pig in the second half of next year. Now, the pig's only got water and wood hidden inside that, no fire. Okay. 2020, we've got metal and water. When we've got metal and water, the market becomes a bit more depressed. So, mm. you know, if you're looking to sell, this is, I was just saying this to a client the other day, she's, she has to sell her home quite quickly. Get it on the market, get it sold before the end of this year while there's still a little bit of fire around. Then rent for six to 12 months. Rent, I've, I've advised 2020, when the market, there's no more support the mark the market is going to cool we're not going to have the same scenario as we did with the the, the, the global financial crisis but it, there is going to be a cooling off purchase in 2020 but sell now 2021 more metal uh, we've got a little bit of earth but it, it's it's winter earth it, it's not mm. going to help the market much 2022 with the first half we've got the tiger in the second half now, hidden inside the tiger is some fire and um, and earth. So second half of 2022 is a little bit better if you're selling. Then we're into 2023, water and wood. 2024 is um, wood and earth, a little bit of spring earth, but there's water in the dragon. Really, the fire does not start to come back until 2025, Rachel. 2025 is Yinwood snake. Mm. And you know that snake is the beginning of the summer season. But more importantly, there's a bit of metal with the snake too. More importantly, hidden inside the snake is, is some fire and earth. 2026, Yang fire horse. So 2026, oh, we yes. should see... The market recover. Yeah. 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 So for the for, for now and especially mid 2019, really until 2026, the mark we're not going to have the buoyancy of the market mm. that we've had previously, that we've enjoyed previously. It's going to become more of a buyer's market and less of a seller's. Yeah, and I'd have to agree with you in regards to the statistics because certainly the, the amount of stock that's on at the moment in comparison to what was on last year um, is like it yeah. increased a lot. So there's a glut in the market, there's less buyers, there's more sellers, um, things are slowing. Yeah. We have had the buoyant market, we've been through that and I, I agree we are going to be heading towards a time where it's going to be a little bit challenging for some people, especially if they're thinking of those old prices that they want that people will pay an extra ten, twenty, fifty thousand dollars because they really want that property. It's just not going to be the same market yeah. for people. So um, and really when you get that first offer, you really need to consider that offer seriously and what else is on the market because if you're not looking at it from that perspective and you're thinking about the wish figure or I've got to include the house that I want to buy, yeah. I want to include the new car and the holiday in that price, it's not going to happen and you're not going to sell your house. So I think, yeah, 2026 is um, sounding pretty good and that would also come into like interest rates are on hold at the moment but if that changes that will put you know, the market into a slight little panic. Um, and also we've had an increase in population and they're looking at a doubling or, you know, around about 50% increase in the population by 2061, the Australian Bureau of Statistics. So you think about 23 million people in Australia now and we're going to double that within 50 years, that will then start to, you know, a bigger push for people as to supply and demand and where people are going. So, yeah, lots of lots of good things. Um We've got some really nice comments, Jenny. I'm going to share them with you. We've got um, Jenny saying, great talk. Thanks very much, Jen. Appreciate that. And Jan, do we know Jan Les? Uh, hi, ladies. Lovely to hear from you both. Hey, <laughs> so that's great. Sounds good. And, yeah. Needs a professional contract consultant, Jan Eddy. Oh, very good, Jan. Thank you very much from Townsville. And we've also got Michelle on the line saying, wow, how are you, Michelle? Nice to see you on the line. Terrific. And Susie, thumbs up. Everybody can give us some hearts and thumbs up. Let us know that you're on the line and we can say hello to you. 
we really appreciate everybody being um, with us today. And I think, uh, Master Janine, what we're going to do is do something on a regular basis as to the timing. We can work that okay. out uh, at some stage. But you're heading up towards uh, Sydney in the next, uh, towards the end of the month. So if anybody, <coughs> pardon me, wants to get in touch with you, um, can you just say your website again for everybody listening if they wanted to connect with you prior to you joining us in Sydney? Sure. My, my business is called Shen Chi, E N C H I. So www.shenchi.com.au dot um, and you'll you'll get me. Google Sorry. Janine Led or Shen Chi or or any of those, and I assure you, I'll, I'll pop straight up. And you have the Facebook page as Not well. Yep, yeah, terrific. Yes, and I do. Um, Janine Led. Terrific. And also the International Feng Shui Association. Did you want to give them a little plug with their website? For sure. The um, I run the Australian uh, chapter here. I'm the president of the um, IFSA Australia chapter. So that's www.intfsa.org.au. Office is the same website. Just drop the AU. And don't forget we've got a great conference in Japan, uh, in Okayama, uh, in December and every February we hold a Chinese New Year luncheon in Melbourne where we talk about the incoming energies for the year and what to do with your home so that's always a great a great event um, the chapter runs in Melbourne in February oh, it's you want to be a bit more informed about what to do for the year and I can certainly say from a participant that, you know, went on the first occasion, you know, body, you all made me feel so welcome and like a feng shui family, as you said, you. straight away. So it was terrific. Anybody that's listening or that wants to attend or is just thinking about feng shui, doesn't really know, but wants to put their toe in the water, jump all in because they're a great bunch of people and lovely association and a really nice um way to to spend your weekends and you, you know go to conferences and meet new people and learn new things and uh what to do with your home and how to as you said janine live the best possible and life that you can yeah, yeah. And, and, and yourself too and any consultant so, as you were fun. saying should be trained not only in classical feng shui but chinese astrology yes no chinese astrology is fascinating i i completed the last um, Chinese astrology with Vic Kiedis. Big shout out to Vic if he's on the line with ACES and um, you know obviously there's a lot of trainers out there or, or you know there's probably a lot of trainers but not many of them you know as well versed as yourself and and the people that we've dealt with over the years and the people that I've dealt with and they're just lovely so really good to have everybody there Jan says to say thanks Janine for the plug this is a great talk show so um, that, that's thanks, Jan. <laughs> we appreciate your comments but um, thank you for everybody for being on the line thank you Master Janine for jo joining me today I really appreciate your time I hope Bye. everybody's got a little bit out of it as much as I have I mean I've certainly learned a lot today as I always do spending time with you Janine uh, so thank you and I look forward to catching up with everybody on the next episode bye for now everybody bye Janine thanks thanks Rachel you're welcome we'll see you again soon Thank you so much for taking time out listening to today's episode. If you have any questions on the process of buying, selling, leasing or strata management, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and I'd really appreciate it if you could spread the word by liking and sharing this episode with your family and friends. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and I look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of the Drive Home to Hawkesbury.